Coaches play players that they trust. How do you earn trust? Become a better defender, and I'm about to teach you how. All right, listen closely. I'm going to break it down so that playing defense is no longer a mystery. It's actually quite simple. Notice I said simple but not easy. This is Savvy. I'm Tyler. Simplicity wins, but consistency is the key. We've identified the four core defensive habits that you must have in order to be a great defender. I didn't say good. I said great. Let's start out. Skill number one, you've got to be able to lock the ball. Now, most people got it twisted. Most people got it wrong. You probably do as well you think you've got to stop the ball you think you have to stop your opponent from scoring that is incorrect that is a product of highlight culture which is infecting and honestly really making the game of basketball worse because here's the fact of the matter great offense will always be great defense a great defender's job is not to stop the offense from scoring very few games end 0-0 in fact if you're ever guarding a great player or a star player it's very unlikely you're going to hold them to zero points all you're trying to do is make them a little bit less efficient. You're trying to make them take more shots to score less points. And that's where lock the ball comes into play. Lock the ball is basically this concept. Take away two, battle for the third. Most great players have one thing that they're great at. And you don't have to take away everything that the opponent does. Just take away the one thing that they're great at. If they're great shooting off the catch, take that away. If they're great driving to the right, take that away. If they're great posting up on the left block, take that away. Lock the ball means that when you're guarding the ball handler, you lock them to one side. When we square up and give space and we give a ball handler all sorts of options off the dribble or off the catch, it's their world. They can go to what they're best at. Whereas if you want to be a great defender, all you do is you lock the ball to where your help's coming from. You lock the ball to one side of the floor so that you can overload it. You lock the ball so that you take away their two things. And I'm going to make it real, real simple for you. Every single time you want to lock the ball left. He's a beautiful athlete. He was Seven of the 18 for the Suns. Beverly misses inside. Booker in overdrive. Runs over college. If you want more information on the defensive system that has taken the nation by storm, our lock left defense, you can check that out at our website right here. But for you as an individual player, it's an absolute cheat code. You probably heard, oh, force them to their weak hand, force them to their weak hand. Everybody's heard that. No one does it. Locking the ball nine times out of 10, you lock the ball left. You have a right-handed player that is a less efficient dribbler, a less efficient passer, and a less efficient scorer when they go to their left hand. So one of the two things that we're going to take away is we're going to take away any drive to the right hand. We are going to lock them left. Now, the second thing that we want to take away is we want to take away any sort of space that might have. We want to be in their bubble, in their personal space. The more space you give a great player, the more they have vision, the more they can go to their favorite move. But when we take away space and the ability to shoot off the catch or, or pull up off the dribble, we just get them going fast. Then we can battle them for the third. We can battle them for the drive line on their drive to the left. That's what it means to lock the ball. Now, regardless of whether you're locking the ball left, locking the ball right, if your team forces middle, your team forces baseline, the ability to influence the ball to a spot on the floor, to help, and in a direction is what's going to make you a great team defender. For example, I heard J.J. Redick talk about this at his camp one time. He said that his one skill that got him to Duke was an elite off-the-catch shooter. His one skill that got him to the league is he could shoot off the dribble. And his one skill that kept him in the league as long as he was able to play and made him an integral part of an NBA team and staying on rosters was being a great team defender. Being a great team defender means you can lock the ball to a certain spot on the floor. In any situation, against any action, ball screen, help, whatever, you can put the ball where it needs to go. You don't have to be able to stop the ball, you just got to be able to lock the ball. All right, that is core skill number one. Lock the ball, know where you're putting them, take away two things, battle for the third. Core skill number two. It's what Pat Riley said he worked on every single practice that he ever coached. It's what happens hundreds of times per game and happens every single time your opponent catches the basketball. And this is a little different than what you've heard. It is close 
offs. Now, traditionally, you've heard about closeouts, and we can all do this, right? Where you get your high hands and your choppy feet, and you go ahead and do a closeout. Closeouts are dead. Why are closeouts dead? Because shooters are better than they've ever been in the history of the game of basketball. Teams are shooting more three-pointers than they've ever shot in the game of basketball, and they're shooting from further. By definition, a closeout is where you try to keep the ball out of the paint, and you try to contest a three. Well, against a great shooter, you cannot contest a three anymore. If you contest a three, great shooters are making threes. You can't even let a great shooter shoot a three. And so a close off is different as far as intent. Close off is on the catch, can you get your player or the player catching the ball, can you get them off of the three point line? It's amazing, there's about a 10% effective field goal percentage difference between when a player shoots off the catch without dribbling, it's 10% higher than when they shoot a shot after a dribble. So our goal on every single catch is to close them off. And we want to try and do that to get them off the three-point line, lose vision, put the ball on the floor, lower their percentage. And again, C point number one, we want to lock the ball when we close them off. Take away two and battle for the third. If you can close them off, and you can do that with our technique, which gosh, I give it away, I will. If you want our complete core four defensive workout, make sure you go to our website, you get our app, and you can get our core four defensive of workouts where every player should start to be a trustworthy defender. You only got to have these four skills. Here's our three teaching points that we teach for our close off. First one is we want to sprint and sit. There's no high hands, choppy feet because high hands creates a high body and a high body gets you blown by. We want to sprint and sit. We sprint to the spot and sit down low. We don't want choppy feet. We don't want to be high. We want to get them off the three point line by proximity and not by getting our hands above above the basketball. Here's the second one. We want to make sure that we stride stop when we sprint and sit. So instead of our choppy feet, we want to sprint to a spot and hit one, two into our stride stop. It doesn't take three, four, five touches on the ground to stop ourselves. We would stop the same way that we would turn when we're running some conditioning. We sprint, sit, stride, stop. And number three is we want to make sure that we take away two and battle for the third on our close off. So if we're locking somebody left, we actually want to, with our proximity, with our angle, take away a drive with our angle, get close enough with our proximity to take away the shot so we're battling them for the third right after the close off. Remember, close off, don't close out. Okay, core four skill number three. Reminder, reminder, one, you gotta be able to lock the ball. Two, you gotta be able to close them off the three-point line. Three, you gotta be able to skirmish. A skirmish is like a fake and threaten. A skirmish is like a quick hedge and recover. A skirmish is literally a fake help. When you're off the ball, we don't want to commit to help because when you commit to help, you give up open shots, you give up disadvantage catches. Instead, all we want to do is invade the mind of the ball handler on the drive, on the pass, on the catch, on the action, on the ball screen, whatever. A skirmish is just fake help. It's usually, technically, three things. One, we want to fake help with our foot and hunt the pass with our hand. Two, we want to skirmish across and not up. If I'm defending someone here on the wing and I skirmish up, I'm opening myself up for a back cut behind me. I'm losing vision. I can't discourage the, 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 the cut. I'm also at a bad angle for my recovery as well. We want to skirmish across and not up. And here's the last thing. We want to make sure that we just get the offense to guess wrong. We're just trying to make the offense wrong. So we're not trying to actually stop the drive. We're just trying to get the ball handler to slow up. We want to get them to initiate a pass when we're not actually helping. We're just trying to make the offense wrong. That is a skirmish. If you can skirmish instead of help, you're going to influence the offense much more than if you give an obvious read by completely committing and helping. You're getting free game right now. That is the third core four skill. That is skirmish. Young hit a huge three towards the end of that third quarter. Our fourth and final core skill is this, wall up. Statistically, the worst outcome of a defensive possession is committing a foul. And great defenders have great foul discipline. They are disciplined enough not to commit fouls. When you commit a foul, you not only put them to the free throw line, which has the greatest 
points per possession and offensive efficiency of any offensive outcome, but you're also giving yourself a personal foul, which might put you on the bench longer, and your team a team foul, which will put the other team in the bonus sooner. It's all bad. Eliminate fouls by learning how to wall up. Longest point, point off turnovers, but none yet. Wesley trying to avoid Williams, couldn't do Now, when do we wall up? Three times that we want to wall up. One, on drives, when the ball gets near the paint, we want to try to wall up even out of our stance, making contact with our chest and showing our hands in line with our body and behind our ears. When we reach, it looks like a foul whether we touch them or not. That's the first time you want to wall up. When else do we want to wall up? We want to wall up when we're guarding a post up, an offensive rebound, or at the end of a drive when someone picks up their dribble near the rim. We don't want to focus on blocking shots. We instead want to wall up, contest, make contact with our chest so that we force misses instead of blocking shots. Stop trying to block shots. Over 50% of the time, it ends up in a foul call anyway, unless you're a gifted shot blocker. And chances are, if you're not a freak athlete or incredibly long and tall, it's not you. And the last time that we want to wall up is any time we help at the rim. So when we come over to help at the rim, instead of making like a 50-50 play and trying to take a charge when we're out of position, or instead of trying to come and block a shot, we want to actually get to a spot, get vertical, and force misses, making sure that we do not foul. That is walling up. Four skills. If you have these four skills, I would trust you on the court. A good coach would trust you on the court. And better yet, you're going to be an impactful defender at the highest levels of play. And if you want to play at the next level, you must master these four skills. Lock the ball. Make sure that you can put it to one spot on the floor. Two, close off. You can get players on their catch off the three-point line in the direction that you want. You can sprint and sit. Third, skirmish instead of help. You don't just give up wide open stuff to the person you're guarding. You're able to fake and threaten. You're able to fake help and still be in recovery mode so that you can close off on the catch. And fourth, you can wall up. You can wall up on the ball. You can wall up off the ball. You can wall up at the rim. You can wall up on a dead ball. Do not foul. Nothing puts you on the bench faster than foul trouble and not being able to guard. And if you can master these core four skills, you'll have addressed both. If you want the complete workout, check us out on our website. Check us out on our app. Get the complete core four defensive workout, the only defensive workout you'll need to be a trustworthy defender. I'm Tyler. This is Savvy. You are now smart, tough, and clever. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.